everybody here is waiting for the big show. Seven, uh, seven Tour de France victories. Lance Armstrong Foundation for Cancer Research, tireless advocate of families and patients. And Lance, the last thing I wanted to say before I turn the microphone over is that we found out that Lance wanted this year to start the tour to Afghanistan. <laughs> and General, General Petraeus, of course, he said, Lance, uh, we can do this, but you know, it's a little bit of a difficult security environment for just a few more months out there, so give us a chance. <laughs> Give us the chance to design the right kind of bicycle, and you know how the you know how the military is. So, by the time they got through over-engineering the bicycle, they put the communications equipment on it. The the up armor, Lance, it weighed it weighed ten thousand it weighed ten thousand pounds. So we're gonna invite you back next year. General Petraeus says he'll have the right size bicycle and ready to go. Lance Armstrong. Well, you know, in cycling, it is it is all about power to weight, and so you could it, with ten thousand or ten thousand dollars. The bikes are actually ten thousand dollars now, but ten thousand ten thousand pounds, there'd, there'd be no way to do that. But spending a couple of days here flying around, I look down and I'm like, God, this is the ultimate cycling country. You look at it, and, and the guys are like, No, 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 man, you don't want to, you don't, you don't want to go down there. I grow my beard out, I'll you know wear a helmet. Nobody will know. They're like, Dude, you will be on CNN with your head cut off real soon. <laughs> That doesn't sound too fun. I thought it was bad in France riding around, you know? <laughs> After a while. <laughs> but, and then they, they, this is not what I came up here to say, but they ended up last, <laughs> last year I got third and this year I got 23rd and now they love me. <laughs> but uh, it's been a real honor to be here. This is the second time I've done a USO trip, um, mostly with the same group and, and just the opportunity to visit these bases and especially this time to get a little further out and um, unfortunately yesterday further out meant uh, flying in an uh, Osprey or Osprey or whatever. I will never ever do that again, <laughs> just so you know, um, even for the tour to Afghanistan. But uh, uh, it, it's just been amazing to see these young men and women uh, defending our freedom and our liberty at home. And, and I get asked all the time, or I get told all the time, that for winning the Tour de France a few times or surviving an illness like cancer, you know, those are heroic efforts. And people throw that around so easily. They say, oh, that's a hero, or what you did was heroic. And you know, you're real, I'm really reminded when I come here, and, and I think we all are, that um, if we're athletes or if we're cancer survivors or entertainers or people that have a lot of uh, fans and a, and a big following, that doesn't make you a hero, but what we see every day here and we touch and we feel and we listen to and we hear their stories and we eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner with them and we sleep with them. Well, not really sleep with them, really. <laughs> sleep, <laughs> sleep, sleep, we sleep like them. Um, um, we had five, how many people in the room last night? Five or six? Um, yeah, is that small? That's probably small, but. Um, anyhow, we're reminded what true heroes are, and so it's, it's a real honor to see that, and it's, a, and it's an honor to call home and talk to your kids and tell your kids that, uh, you know, they say, what are you doing? You say, I'm hanging out with heroes. That's a pretty special thing to say, so um, from all of us uh, to you, uh, you are our heroes, and, and we don't take for granted your service. We know that this is a, is a very special time of the year, regardless of your beliefs, um, and we're here for you, and the entire country is behind you, and we look forward to having you home safe and sound. And, uh, and look forward to many, many more years of, uh, of the freedom that, that you ladies and gentlemen uh, have helped provide us. So uh, thank you. Thank you for being here and thank you for your service. Yeah. Do you enjoy the woods and extra money? Well, fuck yeah, let's go, let's go play paintball in Missouri. Fuck yeah. Next thing you know, you're sitting in an outhouse in Kabul going, this was that in the brochure. What the fuck? And I don't know what the age cutoff is for the National Guard. I, I think there's a re-upping program that you could, Moses could join if he wanted. <laughs> there's a, there's a, that guy. How old are you, sir? You're 54, you don't look a day over 53. You look, you look great. 
I met a female soldier that was 59 years old from the National Guard, and I and I, I was I was like, wow. And then I thought, holy shit, that's four years younger than my mom. Do you know how much money I would give to see a videotape of my mom and dad in a tank in Kabul, just to hear the bickering in the tank? Jack, our blinker's still on in our tank. And Vicky, we don't have a goddamn blinker. It's a tank. I have to go to the bathroom. Jack, Jack, turn up your hearing aid. God damn it, I'm scared. My dad would kill her. He would, and he would not apologize. He, I did. I shot her. It's a goddamn war. Do you want to talk or do you want to win? Jack, 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 Jack. All right, you guys seem warmed up. We got a great show for you. Doing my ass up all day long. And if you did not laugh at that, you need counseling. Because you have lost your sense of humor. This would have been enough, but now his wife joins him on stage. And his wife is Amy Grant. And if you don't know who she is, you should. Because she, my friends, is the greatest Christian singer in all of Christendom. And she's made entirely out of cream. I know, because I poked her. Bloop, 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 bloop. And she's perfect. Because the only thought I had in my head while I stood next to her was, Lewis, you're a despicable piece of shit. Doves were flying around your head, much like this fucking chopper. <laughs> <laughs> she walks on the stage and they embrace and kiss. Go fuck yourselves! Enough is enough already! Look, when it comes to love, I am the most cynical prick in the universe. However, when those two kiss, you could palpably feel their love crash in waves over the audience. I was knocked down by a riptide of their love. And as I lay on my back, I had only one thought, and that was, how was I, a Jew, ever gonna know Christian love. And then she began to sing. And she sang like an angel, and as angels are wont to do, she sang about Jesus. So at this point, I turned to my friend Kathleen Madigan. She'd gotten me a gig. I said, Kathleen, come on over here. I want you to take a good look at the time, and I want you never to forget it because this is the precise moment that our friendship has come to an end. <laughs> and then I fled the area because I knew if I stayed there, I would rush the stage and accept Christ into my heart <laughs> as my one true savior, if just to get the audience on my side. This is, if you don't know, and you probably don't, but this, this is one of the greatest Hall of Fame songwriters in Nashville, Tennessee. If you've heard country music, uh, if you've heard Vince Gill and, and Faith Hill, Tim McGraw, George Strait, you've heard Bobby D's music. He's had a ton of number one records. He's one of my dearest friends. And he also made this trip over here two years ago with me to Iraq. So he's no stranger to uh, sand and us trying to blow our noses so hard, but it won't come out. <laughs> well... Thank you, first of all, for everything you guys do. I mean, you are the true rock stars. That's one thing I found out. You guys are the rock stars. And, you know, we've been traveling all over the place. I mean, in all this time, Lance runs eight or nine miles a day. Every day. I was running with him yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? the fuck? Yeah, yeah it, it is the truth, though. I was so excited when we found out Lance was going to be on the tour. I mean, just imagine seeing that on your itinerary. I'm like, this is going to be awesome. I'm finally going to get healthy, you know? I want to be eating <laughs> salads the whole time and whatever like that, you know? I mean, I know I can't keep up with him on a bicycle. He won't have a bicycle. That'll be cool. So, <laughs> sure enough, first day in the cafeteria, Lance gets his big freaking cheeseburger, swear to God, and piles french fries all over it. Like 3,000 calories on a plate, so I do just what Vance, Lance is going to do, you know? And I eat the hell out of it. I got this gut bomb going on. And then, not kidding, Lance goes and runs nine miles. Well, I made it right now. Thank you. Yes, indeed. 
I landed here. And they said, turn your clock back by a half hour and fuck off by a hundred years. <laughs> Even the GPS on my phone went, where the fuck are we? <laughs> fuck, Kluke. <laughs> Girl, there's one Scotsman here with a puppet. You've been in country too long. He's going, I have a puppet, I'm happy. <laughs> that puppet is moist, I see that. <laughs> that thing, how, how, how long have you been in country? Long enough. <laughs> it's nice to fly, you get in here, you fly in, I flew in on a C-17. That thing is like, you know, that's loud, but then you get on a C-130 and you get off the plane going, how was your flight? Really good. <laughs> Thank you for bringing me here. And the pilots are always really bad. They have their shit together no matter what happens. Even if something goes wrong, they're going, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, you just heard a loud bang a moment ago. If you look out the right window, you notice we've lost an engine. <laughs> Haven't really lost it. It's still there. Just a bit smoky at the moment. <laughs> three out of four is not bad, though. And my old mother used to say three is better than none. And four environmental passengers will be using one quarter less fuel. <laughs> I found out yesterday they have a Go Garp Cup. Santa's here. Santa's, the Santa's in Afghanistan. He was the only sled with a door gunner. We're going to be dropping presents now. One elf in the back like this. Okay, we're going in. It's so nice to see you guys during daylight because we've done a lot of shows where it's at nighttime and you see guys in digital camouflage but they're wearing reflective strips. <laughs> which I think is kind of like a Nerf vibrator. <laughs> it's like it, it defeats the purpose, really. You kind of look like the world's most heavily armed crossing guard. <laughs> Cross the street! I don't want to! You do it! <laughs> oh, cross the street, Tommy! <laughs> Meanwhile, I know they talked about yesterday that I guess they came up with a new uh, timeline for Afghanistan and I have one idea I'd like to throw out there for you in Afghanistan. Casinos. <laughs> hey, 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 seven, hey, oh. This is amazing. I was, before I came here, I was in Australia, which is a pretty unusual country. If Darwin had landed in Australia, he would have gone, I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> My fucking theory is shit. <laughs> He would have looked down and go, what's that? It's a kangaroo. Looks like a llama fucked a velociraptor. <laughs> and they basically said, a female llama has three vaginas. I'm going, talk about a woman who's going to be hard to please. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, no. They can. <laughs> and a koala is basically like a little furry Lindsay Lohan. Little, a cuddly little junkie. It's like, I don't know. I've been off and I'm better now, haven't you? And if you look at a platypus, a platypus is living proof that God did inhale. God was like, okay, what have I got left? Okay, duck bill. Yeah. All right, okay, all right, okay. Uh, beaver tail. You're a mammal who lays eggs. <laughs> Deal with that one, Darwin. Good luck. And Australia has six of the most dangerous animals in the world, not including Mel Gibson on a cell phone. <laughs> Wow. Mel says stuff that even people at Tourette's go, good one. <laughs> Meanwhile, back home, things have been getting a little crazy. The Tea Party's been acting up. The Tea Party, if you know them, they always have people that, there's like they have demonstrations and they always have pictures of a guy there with a sign that says, Obama's a Nazi! And even Hitler's going, you have not read my book. <laughs> <laughs> but it's weird too. And also in California, they tried to pass a marijuana, make it legal bill. It did not, are you over here in Afghanistan? <laughs> You're going, we'll try. It didn't pass, why? Because the people before it were too stoned to get out and vote. If we could do it on Xbox, it would have fucking floated up. <laughs> and it's where they talk about legalizing pot. It's in every one of the state parks. And last year when the state forest caught on fire, even the guys fighting the forest fires were like, <laughs> make another rainbow, Tommy. <laughs> Even Smokey the Bear was baked. He was like, only you can... <laughs> Shit, I knew this. Excuse me. It's a video. It's a video. Oh my God. Merry Christmas. <laughs> 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 <laughs>